order, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the first item is the adoption of this committee's minutes of January 10th and recommendations to approve those minutes. Second. All in favor, opposed carried. Uh, item two is our first delegation. I'd like to invite Mr. Tom Cox from the Westwood Plateau Community Association to come forward and he wishes to speak on the regional growth strategy. Welcome, Mr. Cox. Your name and address, even though we know who you are and where you live, tell us again. Okay, I'm Tom Cox. I live at uh, 1465 Parkway Boulevard in Coquitlam. And hi. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the Westwood Plateau Community Association uh, wished to remind this committee and council that we continue to look for protection for the Westwood Plateau Gulf uh, lands and the green areas of Coquitlam. Uh, we understand Metro Vancouver is in the process of sending out the latest regional growth strategy and there will be a 60-day clock for comment from the municipalities. In the meantime, these lands remain general urban based on Coquitlam's earlier request to Metro Vancouver. You had made the suggestion Coquitlam consider these lands in the regional context statement as protected. Our understanding is this would require a vote of 50% plus one at Metro Vancouver then to change the designation. We were told by Metro Vancouver that having our lands put back into conservation and recreation would then require a vote of two thirds plus one. Obviously our preference is the designation conservation and recreation. We would like to be involved in the discussions for your reply to Metro Vancouver and request that we be part of your decision making process. And uh, we look forward to the opportunity to meet with you and staff on these lands. Thank you. Okay, just uh, so you know, Mr. Um, pardon? Oh. Okay, just Mr. McIntyre has been uh, not only uh, our representative, but also the chair of the working group. And uh, I know you've had conversations with him about the regional growth strategy. Um, we are still working forward on our Made in Coquitlam solution, which we figure is um, probably the best way to go. And in light of uh, all the new uh, concern from LM TAC around the First Nations lands as well, um, I have serious concerns why we're, why we're rushing ahead to, to deal with this. But um, when we do get to the point, we haven't received the draft yet. I believe we're receiving it mid-February. And if that's the case, then as soon as we start working on our Made in Coquitlam solution, you will be the first people that we will call to work with us. So Mr. McIntyre, did you want to have a quick comment? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon. Um, actually, we just received, I'm advised by the city clerk, we just received late Friday okay. the um, regional growth strategy um, from Metro Vancouver. It's been referred out by the, uh, the Metro board. So I guess the 60 day clock now has started ticking and uh, we'll be into that process. Okay. So thank you. we're not going away. You're going to be hearing from us. Okay. And thank you very <laughs> okay, much for coming you. again, Mr. Cox. Councilor Reed. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilor Sikora, did you have a question for Mr. Cox or a comment? Yes. Uh, I said on the Metro Vancouver board, uh, as of uh, just a month ago when I got appointed to the Metro Board. And exactly, we did pass a resolution uh, on, on the last uh, Friday as far as the GVRD is concerned, Metro Vancouver. But however, it'll be still another 60 days before the final thing comes through. And I'd certainly be interested if you gave me a call or come in and to see me and had a cup of coffee, I'd like to have your views on it to see what is, it that, what is it that the association would like to see happening because it's important to me of how I vote at the board. Okay, do you want to discuss that over coffee then? Yeah, yeah. give okay. me a call. Sure. Okay. Thank call you. Call the city hall and they'll connect you to my cell phone or I can give you my card and you can... I've got your you. number on the city website. Yeah, please. Call me on my cell. That's the easiest place to reach me, okay? Make okay. it a big cup. You'll have lots to say. <laughs> okay. Any Thank others? you for coming. Next item, please. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item, I'd like to invite Mr. Hugh Kerr from Polygon to come forward. It's a housing choices pre-application uh, pertaining to a number of addresses on Highland Drive, Coast Meridian Road, and Dayton Street. Um, let's activate the okay. document. Um, 
just before I ask for your name and address, this is um, one of our proposals that's coming forward. There's no resolution. It's just dipping your toes in the water to see what council thinks about it and to be able to present it to the committee as a whole. Your name and address for the record, please. My name is Hugh Carr and I'm a Vice President of Development at Polygon Homes and uh, our address is uh, Suite 900 1333 West Broadway. So thank you for giving me some time to come in and talk to you. As uh, Councillor Reed says, I just want to introduce this project and uh, it's just, we're, we're right now, it's just our preliminary application stage, so just to fill you in on what, what the project's all about. Um, the site is approximately eight acres at, uh, starting at the corner of Coast Meridian and Highland, and um, there are presently eight single family homes on the site. Uh, the proposal is for 94 homes in a, a low-density duplex form. The, the density we're proposing is approximately 11.5 units per acre with an average unit size of a, just over 2,000 square feet, which we feel provides a less expensive housing uh, option from single-family homes presently in the area. Um, the, there is a, a change in zoning that is required with this proposal. There are two pieces of um, uh, RS8 zoning. One is facing onto Coast Meridian in, in this location here, and the other is facing onto Highland Drive in this location here. The rest of the site is zoned RT2, which is conventional townhomes. Now, We need something this, this is our proposed site plan. And one of the significant things about the site, I don't, know if I, I don't know if I need that. One of the significant things about the site is it's a fairly steep grade that's going from the northeast down to the southwest corner. And there Mr. is a water. Excuse pool. me, Hugh, could you yeah. hold on a moment? Do you have the move around mic? The, the, thank you. Oh. Because the people in the back row are from the northeast and they do need to hear you. Okay, is that working? That's perfect. perfect. Oh, that, that's better. Um, and now there's a diagonal water course that cuts down through the site, which is a very strong site determinant. Um, so our proposal is for duplex townhomes across the entire site. And in a couple of cases, we're showing single townhomes, and it all has to do with, with how the site is graded. Um, we have a principal entry coming in off a new right-of-way uh, off Devonshire Avenue and a secondary entry coming down in the, uh, the, the southeast corner. So this would be the principal entryway, entryway for approximately 66 homes and this would be for 28 homes in, in this location. Now, there's two locations that are outdoor amenities here and here on the site, and uh, there's visitor parking throughout. Now, I note on the, on the summary from staff that, that it's suggesting that we're asking for a variance in visitor parking, and we're not. We will provide all the visitor, required visitor parking, just to be clear about that. Now, in your package, there's the attachment number eight, and I submitted that as sort of going through the checklist of why we feel that townhomes are appropriate for this site, and I'd just like to draw your attention to, to uh, uh, four of them. One is the location. The RS8 portion of the site faces Coast Meridian and, and Highland Drive, and limiting driveway access to this arterial, in, in the case of Coast Meridian, we feel is desirable. The, the proposed townhomes present a front door to the street versus fenced rear yards, which is a con in condition uh, facing Coast Meridian in the neighborhood. Uh, and townhomes will prevent a more urban expression. Now, under impact of uh, amendment on infrastructure, the existing RS8 designated areas could accommodate, that's the areas uh, here and here. Um, we calculated it could accommodate as many as 11 not lots facing Coast Meridian and 11 lots facing Highland Drive for a total of 22 lots. In addition, in these locations, there could be 22 secondary suites. Um, within these homes for a total of 44 residential units. Our proposal is for approximately 30 uh, duplex, uh, 30 homes in duplex format in these two locations for a net decrease in the total number of possible residences by 12 homes, hence less impact on infrastructure and less vehicular impact, less driveways coming down and hitting the street. 
land use compatibility and density. Um, the proposed duplex form is compatible with small and large village single family proposed. The form of development is similar in scale to nearby single family development. And I'll just show some of these images that I submitted with the preliminary. Um, these are, the, the top two are a couple of duplexes that we have built over at Belmont. So in, in, um, in many cases, the, the, the buildings we're proposing have that look. Some of the internal ones, this is sort of two story and I just offer up some of the pictures in the bottom of sort of more sort of three-story massing on single-family homes. Um, there are three-story massing facing, uh, in the case of Highland Drive and Coast Meridian. That has to do with the grading. There'll be two-story in the back and three-story on the lower side, which is permitted in, in the RT2 zoning. Um, so the proposal is for approximately 94 homes in duplex form. And the existing zoning would allow for up to 125 homes, and there is a, a, an attached spreadsheet uh, in your package for a reduction in density of approximately 30 homes. And that doesn't include the, the possible uh, 23 homes having secondary suites. Um, and then I've, I've, I've touched base on the average size of the homes. All the, all the, the, uh, the homes will have side-by-side -side parking for two vehicles. And as I say, well, not positioned as an entry-level town, but provide an alternative to the higher-priced single-family homes. Uh, in terms of design, we feel the duplex form is sensitive to the neighboring single-family uh, residences. We have work to do on them. We'll acknowledge that. This is a preliminary application. And in, in talking with some of the neighbors, we realize there are concerns about the nature of the form, and particularly in the case facing Highland Drive. And we've got work to do in terms of um, breaking down that massing somewhat. Um, and the uh, addressing of the steep grading of the internal roads resulting in stepping of buildings adding further uh, further scale differentiation. Here's uh, again some preliminary elevations. These are the uh, sort of more Belmont style two story facing the th street, three story in the back. These are three story facing the street and we'll have, we'll have doors facing the street in these locations. That's a duplex building of course and that is the two-story massing facing internally. And you can see where there's a break in the grade right there. That's because of the steep grading. And we're working on, on um, uh, reducing the massing of these roofs and, and some of the expression. Um, so um, now, just, just further, um, I met with the Ratepayers Association on December 17th and presented this scheme to them, and I have minutes from that meeting. And uh, as I say, we have ongoing refinement of, 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 our, of our site plan and buildings. And we believe this proposal is appropriate for the site, uh, presents a positive street presence, and will be a positive alternative to the expense of single family homes in the area. So thank you. Um, I have one question. I don't see anyone else. Oh, shall I go first? Absolutely. OK. Um, the mass. The massing concerns me, the height of the three stories on the street, and I guess it does to you too. So I gather that they're offset, the duplexes? They're offset. Yeah, uh, one back, one. Not yeah. so much horizontally. Okay. And um, the two, so they'd all be three story right along Highland. If I go to this, the, 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 yes, the, the homes at the far east is actually that duplex is a two story block. Okay. The other ones are, are three-story block. Um, actually, I've got one more. I've got a, a here, here's a streetscape of the, the bottom one right now is how the, the, the that, that's half of the portion of Highland. Um, and, and that's showing five buildings where potentially there could be as many as 11 buildings of single families facing along that, that piece of the site plan. Looking at a bird's eye view of the site, it's, it provides you more open space um, but the massing of the buildings is, you know, it's sort of a give or take, six of one, six of the other. Yeah. But it looks very nice. It looks like a, a nice plan. Um, you're going to have to work with staff on it, though, according to all the siting and that. But um, that, that would be the one thing that I would be concerned about is the massing of these three-story. Councillor Nicholson. Thank you. The first question I asked when I started reading this was how many units would it accommodate at the existing zoning? 
And then I read further, and I think I found 125. That's right. In the middle of attachment eight. And then I got a little confused in looking at attachment eight, because if you look at uh, un under impact of amendment on infrastructure, <laughs> talk about 22 lots. Yeah, that, I'm sorry. And a little further down it says 23, and then in the table at the bottom it says 20. And I, am, am I mixing There, there are, two, we anticipate there'd be 22 single family lots in the between, split between those two RS8. So oh, on the back of RS8, you're showing 104 RT2 and 20 RS8 for a total of 124. Is that correct? That's right. Actually, so that RSA could, should be actually should be 22, so it would be 126. Okay. Yeah, sorry. No, nope, that's jumping around a little bit, but it's, it's 126 versus 94. I think is 124 here. So, so. My apologies for being the accountant in the room. Well, that's my apologies <laughs> for being a little <laughs> unclear. Okay. Any further questions? No. Nope. Thank you for the peek at this new development, and I trust you'll be discussing the rest with staff. Thank you very much. Next item, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, next item, item four, concerns of preliminary report and application for zoning amendment bylaw 4194 and the 5% park dedication provisions for proposed subdivision at 1392 Coast Meridian. Uh, there's a four part recommendation regarding first readings, referral to public hearing, um, requirement to provide 5% land and that council authorize staff to acquire ownership of additional land. Move recommendation. Second. All in favor? No? Question? I, I had a question to me. Councillor Robinson and Councillor Reamer. Thank you. I just, I just had a quick question, and, and maybe I, I've read through this a few times, and I haven't been able to find the number of units that would be um, under the, is it the RM, RTM1? Uh, Madam Chair, um, uh, we have not done that work. We have not asked the developer to do that work. It's, a, it's just the original owner who's doing just some face subdivision. Right. That's fine. Thank That's you very much. That's why report. I didn't find it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Dr. Reamer. Thank you. Uh, I'm just having some uh, difficulties uh, with the drawing here coming up with the uh, eight lots. Um, and I may be looking in the wrong place. Jake, can you, you put up is there a subdivision? Can, can you put something up on the screen for me? Attachment four, maybe. Yeah, attachment four. Would attachment four work? With yes, some? absolutely. Okay. A uh, little bit, a little bit more. Just, yeah, just a little bit more, please. Yeah. I don't know. I'm asking a member. It, it is staff. attachment okay. four, yes. Yeah. So, um, Madam Chair, I, I'll just walk you through the current proposal. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go up and just so I can point out exactly yes, the lots you. we're talking about. Okay, here we go. Okay, so um, uh, the current proposal would be we're creating one, two, three yeah, I see lots, that. and there is a remnant lot that is like that. The existing house is here, um, and so the future lots are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There is going to be a temporary um, right of way here to okay. ensure that the lane uh, access can be facilitated in, in the in the interim until the, the developments in this area are complete. Okay, so that's where the eighth lot was then. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions? No? Hearing none. All in favor? Opposed carried. Moving on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, item five is a preliminary report on an application for zoning amendment bylaw um, and also 5% park dedication requirements for a proposed subdivision at 1294 Coast Meridian. This is bylaw 4195. Staff recommendations to give first reading and referral to public hearing and require the owner to provide cash. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 
Item six is final readings of OCP amendment bylaw number 4113 and rezoning amendment bylaw 4114 and the development permit authorization for a 19 unit townhouse development at 1310 Coast Meridian. Sign for recommendations to get fourth and final reading to the two bylaws and approve the signing and sealing of the development permit. Second mover. Second. Have a question. Questions, Councillor Reamer. Thank you. Um, when this was uh, brought forward, um, uh, there were several of us uh, supporting the addition of the permanent to make that access road permanent. Um, I have a question with respect to uh, the comments by transportation services that indicate really that that road may not be fully permanent, um, at least that one way. And I'm wondering if staff can address that uh, in a little greater detail because I think this was an important issue uh, for several um, council members. Hello? Yeah. Thank you. Um, this is the original plan that showed uh, and actually shows the access into this area based on the official community plan. Um, the addition based on the, on the comments from council following the public hearing were to add a permanent access in here. I believe the transportation comments indicate that this access ultimately because of the need for a median on Coast Meridian may be limited to a right in right out only versus a left, left movements but it would remain as part of the permanent system for access. The full movement access in the long term, when there's a median here, would be here. This would be the actual full movement access where there's um, the full movements available at Galloway. Um, if I could just get some further clarification on that. Um, it says if traffic volumes warrant. So are, are you telling me then that there is, are, there are definitely plans then for this meridian? Um, Yes. On Coast Meridian. Yes, Madam Chair. Based on the fact the land use is in this area, there's a commercial development planned here and here. Okay. We do expect there'd be volumes that ultimately would likely require, um, and, and the long-term plans recognize the, certainly the possibility that there'd be a median uh, to control traffic and channel traffic in this intersection, thereby um, uh, limiting this access, which is a permanent access, but it would be then limited to a right-in, right-out only in time. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Sikora. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the, to the planning department, when the first owner owned this land, had a hard time getting 10 lots on there uh, because that's the problems. And also, he's told that there's definitely no exit, right in or right out of that property. I know that very well about three years ago. There was just no <coughs> exit whatsoever. Now, this new owner, somehow it's got 19 units and a road access. Now what has changed? Why wasn't the first guy, first owner, uh, three years ago told that to begin with, what is the big change all of a sudden? Tell me. Mr. McIntyre. Uh, yes, thanks Madam Chair. Um, I guess nothing is permanent. Uh, things, are, things do change over time. Um, and Council's core is, is quite correct. The initial development proposal for that property at the, uh, I guess, the northwest corner of, of uh, David Avenue, Coast Marine, was very challenged. There was a number of watercourses, and uh, I know it took a while to, to work through the process and, and uh, end with a solution, I think, that satisfied that property owner at the time to get the number of lots that he did uh, with some relocations and that. And um, at that point, we were working with that road plan there because um, it was made very clear to us um, by the environmental agencies that a, a permanent crossing of a roadside channel would not be allowed. They would allow something in the interim, but th what they wanted was that to be an open channel permanently. And so that was the condition we were working under. Um, a number of questions were raised by uh, neighboring property owners about the access. <clears throat> And in the end, um, one of the, the options that was suggested to that original property owner was for townhouses on that site. And that's what he pursued and then found this current developer as a purchaser to buy it on that basis. 
um, when it came to council last time, the, you know, the, the, the concerns <clears throat> about the access, the temporary or permanent, were still there. Uh, council uh, asked questions about that, and, and so staff went back and, and worked with the, the applicant, his consultants, and the environmental agencies. And in the end, the environmental agencies were prepared to support or accept a permanent crossing at that point. So they basically changed in their position. Um, I think there is some additional compensation that has to be done. Perhaps uh, uh, maybe Tom or Eric can speak to that. They've dealt more directly. But it was the environmental agencies that now allowed for that permanent crossing. Um, and so then it could be factored into this plan. And with the one condition being that, uh, as Councilor Reamer raised, it's permanent right now in terms of all turn movements in time if the traffic gets uh, sufficiently heavy along that stretch of Coast Meridian, there may be the need for a median to just limit that to, you know, right in and right out. That's the, so that, in a, in a nutshell, was the, the process yeah. as I understand it. But matter of fact, you know, uh, at that time, if I remember correctly, uh, the fact is that this owner, the first owner, couldn't even get access to, off his own property, to any street unless he went through the neighbor's property. And the neighbor property, if he wanted to cooperate, to give him access to his property. Otherwise, he couldn't have got this. Now, you know, to me, I don't know. I mean, I think a couple things. Uh, we don't have a legal problem in here, because if I was the first owner, I'd certainly go after the city on this one. I'd certainly go after the city on this one, because he was, he was working with the city for two or three years to get things at, at least 10 lots out of there, and he was told no way that he's not gonna get an access to Coast Marine or any, any road. Matter of fact, unless he, unless he goes through the neighbor, he makes a deal with the neighbor. But the neighbor didn't wanna cooperate. So in fact, he's almost like landlock, which is very illegal. We can't lock, uh, landlock anybody in, but there's a situation. So to me, you know, I feel very, very unhappy that these kind of things are, are happening in our city and that our, that our residents have this kind of treatment and then we find out that yes, a lot of things could have been done and we could have maybe just relaxed a wee bit and talked to this gentleman. That's all, uh, Mr. Sheridan, and I, I, you know, and uh, I'm just saying this, that uh, it's not sitting well with me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Are you opposed or in favor? No, I'm in favor. Okay. Thank you. Next item. Next item, item seven, is for a report of the Manager of Economic Development concerning Coquitlam Tourism Blueprint. Uh, the three-part staff recommendation is that the manager work with parties that came together to produce the blueprint and to advance the steps outlined in it that the manager provide periodic updates to council and that this report be referred for information to the upcoming meeting of this committee where the Chamber of Commerce will be invited to discuss it. Okay. So moved. Um, just before we get there, <laughs> I would like to know if, um, the, I'd like to hear um, Wayne's presentation, Mr. Begg's presentation, of course, but I would also like to know if we could move this to our workshop for discussion because I think we have a lot of things on the agenda for discussion. The economic development is certainly at the top, and uh, then we could move this to the next council meeting, defer it to the next council meeting, the recommendation, but hear the presentation today so that we're fully prepared for our workshop, our upcoming workshop, so that we can take all these things into consideration. Would that be talking about the, this coming tree? weekend? Yes. Well, this is gonna be before our next council meeting anyway. Oh, should we, sorry, but what, what I'm saying is our retreat is prior to the next council meeting anyway. Do we need to Understood, defer? but I don't know that these are the recommendations that I would want to make. I'd like to have a lot okay. of further discussion about it, I think. Economic development is a really big uh, part for us. Mayor Stewart. And the only hesitation, I, I agree with that, the only hesitation is that I, th I do think we ultimately do need to have the debate uh, back before committee, so it might be that committee refers it for discussion and comes back to committee for 
uh, adoption of recommendations, either these or other recommendations. And that's a good plan. We can do that and move it to the next committee. But I do want to hear Mr. Begg's um, presentation today because I think that will be good fodder for us for our discussion. So, Mr. Beggs, you're the man. All right, uh, through the chair. Um, the, uh, the group that came together on October 28th uh, is a group of uh, interested citizens that, uh, that from various uh, um, affiliations, some are hotel owners, some are uh, working with community associations, some are um, involved in tourism as, as a business in, in other ways. And they came together on that day uh, in a facilitated session that was, um, that was supported through funding that uh, was obtained from Vancouver Coast and Mountains Tourism. That's the association uh, that does tourism marketing for our region. They're provincially funded. Um, on that day, a, a number of recommendations were, were put forward. Um, but what we asked uh, the facilitator to do was to come back with some things that were specific to what could be done reasonably within the first year uh, of actions. Now, these, are, um, these actions are included uh, as a sub uh, component of our economic development action plan uh, where we talk about under uh, item four uh, working to advance community assets to achieve economic development objectives and tourism is no noted within the economic development plan as one of those uh, areas that we would work to advance. Um, the suggestion of, of six initial steps um, is uh, I would say a reasonable uh, first step towards uh, putting together some, some further economic de development actions around tourism and a number of the things that are suggested are things that we probably need to do anyway. For instance, uh, related to the, uh, the 2012 um, Canadian Women's Open Golf Tournament where we, we have things that we need to do to advance the tourism potential of that event. So uh, I, I don't have a a presentation beyond this, uh, but I am happy to answer questions about uh, what was put together that day and, um, and uh, to discuss uh, further um, opportunities if there are things outside of the things recommended in this report. Okay, thank you. I have a couple of questions. One, one comment again is the golf club, Vancouver Golf Club being a private club, they were approached by Golf Canada to take this on as they've done in the past. I think Councillor Sikora and I attended what, one or two, Councillor Sephora at the golf club? These go the big golf tournaments put on by Golf Canada. So that is sort of an initiative of the golf course. And what is it you're thinking you want us to do to add on to that? Well, there, there, uh, it's, it's early in the, the discussions with Golf Canada, but there, there's the possibility of, of uh, an exchange of things that we can do for Golf Canada and and things that we might achieve in terms of uh, drawing more people to the community and drawing more attention to the community over that time. But like what? That's what I'm asking. Well, um, they do most of their own advertising. It's it's possible. I, this is this is early stage, so so I'm only surmising that this is something that that may be possible. But in terms of getting uh, information out about. Uh, the city. That's something that's done in other uh, yeah. golf tournaments of this nature um, where there's an economic development video that's shown during the broadcast that, that sh showcases the community. That's been done in other events, so that's something that we might want to try and push for in advance. Okay, and the other question is um, the initiating discussions with TransLink while the Evergreen Line is being planned. What tourism opportunities are you seeing there? Well, th this, this one, I think um, there's, there's some opportunities just in terms of directional signage, for instance. Uh, as this, the SkyTrain is developed and you're coming out of the stations, there uh, is our, one of our prime tourism amenities that's right at the doorstep. So Town Centre Park and having directional signage from the, uh, the SkyTrain station into the park and into the various facilities there I think would be a really important piece. Um, there may be other opportunities to um, provide information to people taking transit to the area, uh, provide information to them about the trails that are in the area and the other opportunities for, for um, uh, tourism related activities in the area. 
Okay, and I, Mr. Beggs and I had a conversation when I, I got to this, and we were talking about we're inviting our friends, the Chamber of Commerce, to come forward and, and discuss what's going on about tourism. But one of the things I wanted to know was why, when you travel down the I-5 or some of the other corridors, don't we have those visitor centres that you can pull off and, and catch it all? So we had a conversation um, about the last... I asked... I asked what was the last rest stop before you got to Coquitlam coming in because people coming out are already in Vancouver on the peninsula. But coming in, I wanted to know if we could have a visitor's info booth in the last rest stop and you were going to check with, I can't remember With who, the Vancouver you, Coast and Mountains Tourism and the Ministry back? of Transportation. No, nothing back yet. Okay. Yeah, because even if we had through. to get together with the chambers in Langley and Surrey and us, at least it would be a place to put ourselves before they came over the bridge and be able to say take the first right turn to the best darn city in the world or something like that. Okay, is there any other questions for... Okay, um, okay. I have Councillor Nicholson, Councillor Robinson and then Councillor Sakura. Uh, okay, if I understand you, Madam Chair, we, we don't want to deal with the recommendations today. No, but, I, if, but if we were... If we were? then I would want periodic updates, including a progress report in about six months' time, not one year's time. Yeah. A year is way too long to wait. Okay. And the other one is, have we had a response from the chamber or invitation for them to sit down with us and Yes, discuss they are this? coming. Yes. They're we scheduled. Have a date? Um, well, I'll give it to you after the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Robinson. Thank you. Um, um, I, if I understand correctly, is the province that paid for the facilitation? Is that the province funded the facilitation and they funded it through Vancouver Coast and Mountains Tourism, which is our regional body that does tourism marketing and tourism so organization. That's great because I'm wanting to know if you can give feedback to whoever wrote the report that the volume of typos. <laughs> <laughs> like I have to say, like I've done some consulting and it, 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 it it, um, it dampens the credibility of the content of the report and I've, I just found it really frustrating so if you can give them feedback and I, I'd like in the future that if we get reports that have this volume of typos that we don't accept it and we ask them to fix them before we accept them because I think it I think this was important work a lot of stakeholders came to the table and I think at, at a minimum we ought to have one that has you know correct spelling and maybe I'm just being picky but I, I found it actually hard to read as a result so um, I have another question that has to do with the visitor booth information and it says in the report that the Chamber of Commerce visitor booth information was not available at this time. Does that mean that it's just not available at all or at this time and it, it would become it would come available? Do we have any idea? I believe at that time they hadn't uh, accumulated the, the annual results and we do have that information oh, available. That's yes. great. So when we do hear from the Chamber it would be great for them to bring that information forward. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting um, that I think would be really helpful is what, what are other municipalities doing? Because in the report it alluded to, you know, Richmond has a program, Langley has a program. And I'd be curious to find out exactly what are the, de what are, not the details, but what are some of the components of, their, of theirs. Um, I know that Surrey just did a, a video, a promotional video. So, like, what are some of the things that they're doing? Because I think it's helpful um, to for our discussion purposes to sort of just see what else is going on. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Sakura. Yeah, thank you. Going back to golf, Councillor Reed, you mentioned it earlier. Yeah, I think, I think we've got to be very, very careful. This is an association that put this golf tournament on. And I think Coquitlam has to keep their nose out of it, totally out of it. They look after everything. We've had two golf tournaments before in my time and uh, the Coquitlam wasn't involved in any other way except talking to the police on traffic mm -hmm. control. Traffic control was the only thing that we were involved because if we start getting involved in trying to promote that, they do uh, an awful lot of advertising. It, it, it's advertised through North America continent. So, so I don't think we need to do anything as far as the city is concerned. Just uh, as I said, have a meeting with them and, and also the police department. How do we control the traffic on certain days and that type of deal? And that's about it. And both golf terms that were scheduled here, that were here before, were very, very successful. 
and really there's no need for the city to get involved whatsoever. Thank I you. Think, I think there was a motion that I wasn't allowed to golf, right? Pardon? <laughs> if necessary, I'll move the motion. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'm not allowed anywhere near the golf course while there's a tournament going on. Uh, okay, if there are no further oh. questions, Councillor Robinson. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to defer these recommendations to the next committee meeting pending the outcomes of our discussion coming up next week. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you very much. And I have one more item. Mr. Clerk, I meant to bring this up to you, but got chatting. Um, I do want to speak to a letter that we all received today from uh, Frida Hart from the Northeast Coquitlam Ratepayers Association, and I immediately went running into planning to um, ask for clarification. And this is with respect to an item that's um, coming up on the um, public hearing. It's item number four. So I'm going to ask if staff would get up and uh, please answer the um, questions or statements made in this letter. I think it's really important. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I can speak to that. Notification is part of the clerk's office uh, function. Um, You're speaking to the notification. Has everybody seen the letter? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Clerk's office also takes responsibility for quick distribu distribution of such letters. Um, so the property in question is before you. Um, according to our bylaw, the notification area, um, unless altered by a resolution of council, is the circle that you see before you. Every part of that, every, every property that touches upon that circle will receive a notification. Uh, in this particular instance, you'll notice that there's actually not a large number of lots. The lots there are large, it's particular to this area that's being developed. So in this case, 41 letters were sent. There are no businesses, there were no, there's only one secondary suite in the area. So as it pertains to say some other notifications where we might mail in the hundreds, if not close to a thousand, this one only had 41 notifications mailed out and can lead to the impression that there wasn't a large degree, but in fact, these properties um, say on the far left, uh, even where the circle just touches it, um, that whole property, that area gets a letter even though it's just a minor portion of it. So um, I can say on behalf of the clerk's office that uh, all of those letters went out. They went out ahead of time. The newspaper advertisements were placed in accordance with all of our standard procedures. Okay. And in the second paragraph, there's something about um, decreasing the setback, and I want to confirm that. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair. Um, we uh, we are have a um, drawing or something that you can put up. Yes, I don't have the drawing with me right now. We're in the process of getting that prepared, uh, but I have confirmed through a comp comparison of the existing uh, uh, plan versus the one that was presented previously under the 35 unit proposal uh, that there has been no change in the in the floor plate of these buildings at all. In fact, the setbacks uh, have not changed, and in fact, one of the setbacks has increased. Um, the riparian area protection area has not been altered. Uh, it, they have to meet the requirements, and I can confirm that they have not achieved the uh, the change in the unit numbers by elongating the units. It has been really by the by the essentially the demising walls between the units have changed, but the floor plates of the buildings have not been altered, and um, I am preparing a plan, having our staff prepare a plan uh, for the public hearing tonight. Okay, that's good to know, Councillor Nicholson. Thank you. I just wanted to confirm, was there signage on the property leading up to the public hearing? I think we have a requirement for that, but I'm not clear on exactly what it is. I can, I can speak to that. Uh, yes, I'm just trying to get the, um, the signs went up on January 12th and they will come down on January 25th. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Robinson. Other, a different item. Oh, okay. So that was just for clarification. There's no resolution needed. I just wanted to make sure we answered these before we went to public hearing so that we're going into public hearing knowing that what we sent there is what we're going to get. Councillor Robinson on a different item. Thank, thank you. Um, in the Tri-City News, Friday, January 21st, was in the money and biz section, Coquitlam leads in construction, and there were some yes. numbers. So uh, if you guys have felt busy, it's because we have the numbers here. And I'm just wondering if you could put this together in a memo for all of council. There might be some folks, or if you have something that is more official than a torn out page of the newspaper, that would be really 
helpful. Um, and, and just there's also a little note about business licenses also holding steady that uh, that's grown by uh, five and a half percent as well. So maybe we could get something, some memo that speaks to this. Are you looking for bragging rights here? <laughs> well, it's just it's nice to have the numbers in your back pocket. <laughs> Mr. McIntyre. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, um, we are pulling together some numbers. Um, uh, I was actually had uh, looking for some population stats to go along with that. So it's not just the number of units. We had some population numbers. I have that. Uh, just got a little busy last week. The media got ahead of us. And uh, so I, I do apologize, but we will get that information to council. It's, it's a good news story. And uh, I think it reflects um, the range of opportunities in Coquitlam. We see, um, as, the, as the standing committee knows, you know, week in, week out, we get proposals from the southwest. And now we're starting to see them in the city center and up in the northeast. So there's a variety of, of uh, growth opportunities here. And that's reflected in those numbers. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anything else? Hearing none, move. Second. All in favor, post carry. We're done. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <laughs>